face that this world has forgotten. Mm, what is up, guys? And as always, of course, welcome to another top five video from your stroller course, Death Carinder. And as you guys see on the screen, we're going to talk about the draft league yet again. And this time, we're going to focus on the top five dragon Pokemon. Before we even start with this, I do want to say this is a new series on my channel. And this series is going to focus on every typing. That means that we're going to have 18 videos of that. And then we're going to have two more videos. The one which is going to be about Mega Pokemon, that I do believe are most viable. And the last one being Obscure Ubers. Because some leagues, or even mostly even, actually have some Ubers in their leagues, but with some restrictions. So with that in mind, I do want to complement that and actually just... Uh, kind of give them an honest chance of actually their viability even with restrictions in mind so with that said this is definitely what we're going to go at so with that said we're of course going to talk about as stated here the dragon types in the league and which one I, I do believe is the most viable so with that out of the way i really want to state that you know this is my personal five top and list and in the, end of the day my opinions are just that just opinions and trust me most dragon types are viable in the league so top five might actually not do this just but with that in mind i really want to say that this pokemon that i've chosen are pokemon i do believe have strong niches in leagues but also can be on their own very very ferocious and it should come to no surprise that the ones i pick at the top three spots are there for a reason they're just that good um so with that said you know thank you as always here for of course joining this list and let's go of course our number five spot starting off the list an actual pokemon that people are intending to view as a dragon type and that is of course kingdra kingdra is a very obscure uh, dragon water type but one of the rarest typing combinations in the game i do believe the other one is actually palkia so that's that's how obscure it is while kingdra on its own isn't necessarily as impressive it has underwhelming stats very low hp is 75 then a 95 across the boards and the lower speed is 85 but you would say that it's a very very fast swift swimmer it's one of the fastest actually in the game if not the fastest i do believe the only uh, the one that rival that are actually float seal and trust me you don't need necessarily swiss on that now with that said the reason this becomes a very very good viability to it is because it does spam gray coast really really, really well specs kingdra is one of the strongest pokemon you will be forced to be dealing with kingdra do resolve a lot of issues should be said also due to the water inclusion here ice typing do not hit you super effectively while free strike will ruin you for real it should be stated here that the water inclusion here does resolve a few issues and also since of course dragon timing does resist both grass and electric dragon timing also resolves a few things in water typing making this combination a very very strong and balanced typing and with like i said here specs and in the rain team kingdra will showcase its ferocious power here as being one of the strongest dragon types around as long as the environment for it does of course resolve that for it coming up at number four is probably the most obscure thing on the list and that is going to be Dragon. Now, Dragon is a Pokemon that, on the tiers, maybe not that viable. It is a pretty bulky-ish Pokemon with a low HP, 75 in support of HP, 120 in attack, which is fairly decent. 90 cross the board in his defenses, very low special attack of 60, and a very low speed of 48. But what does resolve this Pokemon really well is it got Rough Skin, it got Mole Breaker, it got Sheer Force. All of these abilities could be capitalized very well in League Concept depending on what you're facing. Rough Skin could be capitalized as defenses to be able to of course do extra residual passive damage, to have Mole Breaker to be able to resolve any regenerator Pokemon or any Pokemon that does levitate because this Pokemon has a very very strong move pool. Even due to sheer force, its special offensive Pokemon pool could be very viable, much like Tauros really. This is a Pokemon that does heavy amount of damage on the special of course offensive side if sheer force line form does allow it. The big issue here is the speeds here, but it doesn't necessarily need to be a bad thing. It's also the defensive set, uh, it does learn Stealth Rock, making this a very, very strong Stealth Rocker. And due to the mixed defenses, this Pokemon can take a lot of punishment very well and are able to get rid of capitalize the retaliate later away. Uh, one thing that does stand out for Dragon is that while Ferris is a Pokemon that, or Pokemon typing, that tend to threaten most Dragon type, Dragon is one of the few that are able to Oko most Ferris due to Sheer Force Gunshot being an extreme amount of damage actually most of the time 
Oko and anything that comes in, making Dragon one of the weirdest Pokemon to be able to face against because it does have priority in Sucker Punch. And just overall, it's very, very unpredictable. And that very same unpredictability is the very same reason it makes a very strong Pokemon in Leagues. It's a lot worse in tiers, but in League concept, it's one of the best, if not the best. The next Pokemon is a Pokemon that really doesn't need any introduction, but I'm gonna do it anyway, and that's Dragonite. Hey! <laughs> no, but really, Dragonite is very, very ferocious Pokemon as a whole. Uh, one of the few Pokemon that does get multi-scale, and this is actually its viability in definitely in Carpeted. And multi-scale is pretty much the things that makes this Pokemon not die to Ice Beam. It is a Dragon Flying typing. It's not a bad type, say one of the better ones, but it does get four times a week to Ice. But multi-scale, of course, when you're full HP, reduce any damage by 50%, making you able to survive an Ice Beam, no problem. The thing is here, Dragonite is actually fairly bulky, 91 is HP, 95 in its defense and 100 special defense, and it's also very offensive, 135 in its attack and 100 in special attack. It is a bit of a slow side, making this Pokemon very often forced to use Dragon Dance, but as stated, due to multi-scale, it will very very likely to pull that off more times than not. Dragonite, due to that extreme stat, really, or attack stat, doesn't make this Pokemon very hard to prep for. Bandit set with Outrage or Extreme Speed is one of the strongest sets in the game, and it also able to capitalize on Sea Fly, which makes it able to capitalize on its dual stab very well. And together with Dragon Dance, there really aren't that many things to take this Pokemon on, and it's one of the few Pokemon that probably can take Dragon Dance Roost. Dragon Dance very well and actually gets itself back to multi scale to defensively check itself against opponent, which actually Roost to be able to reactivate a multi scale because the only thing you need is to be one on HP to actually be able to capitalize on uh, all the multi scale. So, Dragon as a whole is a very desirable Pokemon, and for this very reason, it's because of its priority and it's just out. Right, ridiculous attack set. There are so few things to take this on head on, and even at that, the special set on Dragonite are just a ferocious just because it can capitalize on maximizing its damage without really any bigger prep. It deals with almost any matchup fairly well. It's really actually walled out by anything because of its extreme stats as a whole. Now, the next Pokemon is just as ferocious Garchomp. Wow. Well, most guys of Car probably already saw this one. Common Garchomp, one of the strongest Dragon types around. Um, the combination of Dragon type and Ground is one of the strongest in the game, mainly because it does deal with Steel type, which usually are able to force out Dragon types to some extent, but being able to hit them with super effective damage and stab, yeah, that's rough. But not as rough as rough skin, hey! No, but really, the only draw uh, backside to Garchomp is his abilities aren't necessarily that interesting. And it doesn't learn Dragon Dance, rightfully so. I do believe Dragon Dance would make this Pokemon pretty busted. It should definitely be stated here that what makes Garchomp very, very much more desirable than the likes of Dragonite is its distribution between stat. It's bulkier in its HP with 108, 130 is in attack, so it's a slightly weaker. Uh, 95 in defense, which is the same as Dragonite, lower special attack in 80, uh, lower special defense in 85, but are a lot faster at 102. This B tier is a very, very niche B tier, and it does resolve a lot of issues that could the Dragon type could be facing. Primarily, Fairy types actually here. The few Fairy types that are speeder in Dragonite are not more speeder than Garchomp, barring Mega the Energy to some extent. But quite honestly, Dragonite is, compared to Garchomp, not as ferocious. Uh, Garchomp is scary turn one. Uh, it is able to learn the likes of Stealth Rocks, but also able to capitalize on C-moves and does heavy amount of damage to a very, very broad in the matchup. And due to these C-moves, they're able to capitalize and wall break most things very well, making Garchomp one of the strongest Pokemon and Dragon in the game. But in my honest opinion, it is not the strongest. For me, the perfect Dragon typing combination, or at least in my honest opinion, are both Latias and Latios. A bit of a cop-out, and for that I'm sorry. But they're very, very good and viable for the very same reason. I really can't tell them apart when it comes to their viability. Now, we actually talked about how well-rounded Dragonite was. They could be able to roost. It was could be possible bulkier. And like I said, it could make itself recover. But then we talk about Garchomp. What made it viable was speedier. And it also had access to Stealth Rocks. While both Latias and Latios did not learn Stealth Rock, what they do learn is Defogs, it's able to resolve a very, very big issue for a lot of the teams in the league concept. 
But not only that, they're cannon with bulk gear, they can recover, and they have a danger speed tier of 1 or 10. And this is enough for me to actually put them both on the list, because they do pretty much the same job, even though I would say the other one are more offensively capable than the other one, would defensively responsible for a lot of things. Um, Latias is one of the Pokemon that can learn Healing Wish, making the very, very desirable Pokemon to uh, support the team very well, while of course Latios being able to really dish out a heavy amount of damage, but also, like I said here, able to fill a defensive role, even though, as you guys can see here already, the stats distribution are pretty much the same, it only is a special attack and special defense that does distribute them differently. Uh, same speed tier, 1 in 10, same defense, 90, same HP of, of course, uh, the 80. <laughs> so the only thing difference is 1 out of 10 in his special attack or special defense, and of course opposite within special defense or special attack. Uh, so they are actually mirrored, but outside of that, I would say these two Pokemon has a very, very strong ability too in Levitate, making them immune to toxic spikes and spikes. While they do take damage with self frogs, that's about it, making them a very, very good defonger as a whole because they aren't weak to the things that you get rid of. And at the same time, the combination here is a very, very strong one. While Pursuit Trapping is a factor for these two Pokemon, they're bulky enough to survive that onslaught, and even at that, they are able to recover very, very good and naturally. Making these two Pokemon probably might as well be the strongest dragon types in the league concept. So yeah, that was the top five list. I really hope you guys enjoyed this kind of concept. I'm kind of thinking they're they're pretty hard to do. Um, dragon types are definitely one of the Pokemon that I do believe the dragon type itself really really opens up for you know interpretation. You know how viable is Hydreigon? It's pretty viable, but Fairy does push it back quite a lot. Kamo, how viable is that? Well. Not at all, but <laughs> as a whole, it, it was very hard to make this list. I really started to just look over what makes this Pokemon viable, you know, and why are they often so drafted. And very become very clear to me which Pokemon really stood out. The top three I stated are there for a reason. I could definitely put Salamence here, but I do believe it's just a worse Dragonite to some extent. So by that extension, I really wanted to shed some light on Dragon and Kingdra. Um, so with that said guys, as always, you know, which Pokemon do you feel I was missing here? And even at that, as always, do give me feedback, because we're gonna do another typing next week, we're gonna actually talk about fairies next week, and that can be very interesting on its own right. So, as always, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next week with our next top 5 video. Till then, of course, take care. Bye.